In this video, we're going to go over some mixed functional group nomenclature for organic chemistry, part of the Advanced Grade 11 chemistry um, program. Um, so we're, we've got here a bunch of alcohols, um, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, ethers, esters. Um, some are just uh, alkanes. There might be some alkenes. There might be some alkynes. There may be aromatics in here, benzene derivatives, cycloalkanes. So it's going to be a whole mix of things. And we'll, you should have these worksheets um, printed in front of you and be trying them yourselves or just checking your work as we go. So let's start. For each one, we want to identify what functional group is present. And then based on that, we'll then derive the name of the molecule. So in this first example, what functional group do we see in there? Well, the functional group that uh, jumps out at me is right here, this carbon with a double bond O to it. That's called a carbonyl group, carbonyl, C-A-R-B-O-N-Y-L. Carbonyl is a C double bond O. When that carbonyl group is like this, not at the end of a chain, but somewhere in the center of the chain, um, not at the end, then we're, we're, this is called a ketone. So when you see a carbonyl not at the end of a chain, the molecule is referred to as a ketone. So that would be the functional group that we see there. Now that I know that it's a ketone, the molecule's name is going to end in own. So let's first of all find the parent chain, which will be the longest continuous chain of carbons that includes the functional group. So if I count here, this is one carbon, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight carbons is the parent chain. And when we number, we want a number from the end closest to a functional group. So in this eight carbon chain, I'll number from this end over here on the left. So the functional group, the, key, the uh, carbonyl, is at one, two, three, four, carbon number four. But then I notice that there's this branch over here with two carbons in it. It's at carbon number five in my parent chain. So now I'm ready to name this molecule. Carbon five has a two carbon branch. So that's called five ethyl. Two carbon branches are ethyl branches. This was an eight carbon parent chain. So my immediate thought is octane, but because of this carbonyl, making it a ketone, the name is 5-ethyl dash, and we'll use the Zumdahl, the American way of naming this, dash 4-octanone. So we took octane and we dropped the E at the end and we added O-N-E. The UPAC name for that would have been 5-ethyl octan four own. So they would put this four, which tells you where the carbonyl was, they would put it right before the suffix O-N-E in the name. Okay, so either one of those would be, would be acceptable. The second molecule, what functional group do we see present? Well, the functional group is going to be something other than just uh, carbons and hydrogens, so it's right here, this O-H. Now when I see an O-H and that's it, as a functional group, then I know that I'm looking at an alcohol. The OH is referred to as a hydroxyl group. Don't confuse that with a hydroxide ion, which is OH minus. This OH is not bonded with an ionic bond to the molecule. It's bonded covalently, so it's called a hydroxyl group at that point. So this is an alcohol, which means the name is going to end in O-L, okay, and let's find the parent chain, again, the longest continuous chain that includes that carbon with the functional group. So here's one carbon at the end, two, three, four, five. So there's five carbons in this parent chain. The alcohol functional group is on the second carbon in that five carbon chain. And there is a third carbon branch, the methyl branch. Notice that we're numbering from the end of the parent chain that's closest to the functional group. So we had to number here from the right to give us the closest end to the functional group. 
So the name of this will be, first the branch, so 3-methyl, and now the alcohol, 2-pentanol. Okay. So pentanol because there were five carbons in the parent chain, and pentanol because the alcohol um, functional group means we change the ending to OL. The UPAC name for that would have been 3-methyl and then penten 2 all okay, So 3-methyl, penten 2 all pentane 2 all All right, this third example, we see here a hydrocarbon chain, but then we see this double bond O, which we recognize, that's a carbonyl. We saw that earlier, C double bond O. But we notice that this, this time the carbonyl is at the end of a chain. This carbon here, I just put a dot at, is the C double bond O. When you see a carbonyl group like that, at the end of a chain of carbons, it's now referred to as an aldehyde. So that's the functional group, an aldehyde, a carbonyl at the end of a carbon chain. And the name of an aldehyde ends in AL. So we just count, there's no branches here, so let's just count carbons. This is carbon 1, carbon 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 carbons reminds me of hexane, but because it's an aldehyde, its name is hexanal. Hexanal. You don't need to number this, you don't need to say that it's one hexanal, because to be an aldehyde, the carbonyl had to be at the end of the chain, so that carbon would have automatically been carbon one. You don't need to say one hexanal. Notice when we had a ketone, though, we did have to say where the carbonyl was in the ketone, because it could have been in several different places um, just not at the end of the chain if we're dealing with a ketone. So in ketones, you do have to tell where the carbonyl is found. The fourth example, we see this oxygen in the center of the hydrocarbon chain. It's an oxygen with a branch on the left and a branch on the right. That's the characteristic um, description of an ether. Ether. When you see an oxygen atom, with two branches coming off of it, you're looking at an ether. When you name an ether, you simply name the two branches alphabetically and then add the word ether. So let's look at the branch on the left, starting from the oxygen. There's one carbon here, two, three, four. There's four carbons in that branch, which means it's a butyl branch. On the right, we have one, two, so that's an ethyl branch. Naming those two branches alphabetically, we'll put the butyl first, so we'll call it butyl, and then ethyl, and then ether. So naming an ether, just name the two branches alphabetically and add the word ether. If the branches were identical, suppose they were both ethyl branches, we could say ethyl, ethyl, ether, or simply refer to it as diethyl ether instead. So if you have identical branches, you can simply say di something ether. The next example, the only thing that jumps out of there that could be called a functional group would be the triple bond, which means we're looking here at an alkyne. An alkyne is a hydrocarbon with a triple bond, and so the ending of the name will be Y-N-E. The parent chain has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. That's the longest continuous chain, seven carbons. And we notice numbering from the end closest to the triple bond that would be from the right-hand side, so this would be the not the first, not the second, this would be the third bond counting from the right. If we counted from the left, it would have been the one, two, three, fourth bond. So we count from the right to keep the number smallest. Now that we're counting from the right and looking at carbons, this is the first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, we notice that the fifth 
carbon has a methyl branch. So now we can name it. We'll name the branch first, 5-methyl. And then the alkyne is going to be an, a heptyne with seven carbons. But we've got it, the triple bond is the third bond. So we could say 5-methyl, 3-heptyne. The UPAC name for that would have been 5-ethyl, hept, 3-ine. Okay, again, you put the 3 here in between the uh, hept and the y-n-e suffix. This next example is a new one again. Look carefully and see if you can identify the functional group that's in there. Your eye should have been drawn to this, and you might be thinking it's just a carbonyl, but look more closely and you'll notice that this carbon is double bonded to O and also has an OH attached. So what we have here at the end, this entire thing right here, would be a carbon OOH. That's how it's written when it's written as a molecular formula, COOH. And that tells me I'm looking at a carboxylic acid. That COOH is referred to as a carboxyl group, the carboxyl group. When you're naming it, let's name the parent chain first. So we have carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's got seven carbons in the parent chain. When you're naming a carboxylic acid, the name will be heptanoic, heptanoic acid. If there were no branches, that would be the name, heptanoic acid. Seven carbons, hepta, heptane, I guess. And then oic acid is the suffix for carboxylic acids. But this had some branches on it. We number the parent chain from the functional group, so that's carbon 1. Carbon 2, carbon 3, and carbon 5 have methyl branches. So this would have been 2, 3, 5 trimethyl heptanoic acid. Methyl, 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 single carbon branches. So 2, 3, 5 trimethyl heptanoic acid. The next example has a couple of features. One is this ring. Now that there are no multiple bonds in there, so this is not a benzene ring. It's simply six carbons in a ring, so that would be a cyclohexane. It, but it's got this OH, which is the functional group for an alcohol. So we could argue that this is an alcohol We've seen that already. And because it's bonded to six carbons in a ring, six carbons in a ring, as I just said, is cyclohexane, then this would be cyclohexanol. You don't need to number anything because whichever carbon in the ring has the alcohol group would be carbon one. So that would be carbon number one. If there were other branches, then we might have to um, count from that carbon as being the first carbon in the ring. You always count from the carbon that has the functional group. The next example, the only thing that jumps out as being a little special would be this double bond, which means we're looking here at an alkene. Alkenes are hydrocarbons with double bonds. Now find the longest continuous parent chain that includes that double bond. This would be carbon 1. We're counting from the end closest to the double bond. So carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, and now it doesn't really matter what direction I go, 5, 6. So this is a hexene. The carbon, the double bond, is the second bond. So this would be 2 hexene but it does have this branch, and the branch has one, two carbons in it. A two-carbon branch is referred to as ethyl, and counting from the right still, it was found on the first, second, third, fourth carbon in our parent chain. 
So carbon number four has an ethyl branch. So that's four ethyl two hexene. Alternatively, four ethyl hex two ene. Now, if we had more time, we'd be looking into cis and trans isomerism, and we might note that that is the trans isomer, because at the double bond, the methyl is on one side, while the rest of the molecule is on the other side of the bond, so you might call this trans 4 ethyl hex 2 ene The next molecule, rather complicated looking, but the thing that jumps out that's not just carbons and hydrogens is this OH. And so that's the only thing that's there, so that would be the functional group, and we've seen that a few times now. It's referred to as an alcohol. It's written here as HO simply because um, the, uh, the program that I used to do this because the, there was more room on the left of the oxygen than on the right, so it put the H on the left. It doesn't really matter. Count your parent chain from the end closest to the functional group, and we'd have carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 carbons in that parent chain. So that means decane is the root, decanol because it's an alcohol. The alcohol group is on the one, two, third carbon. There's a methyl branch on the fifth carbon. There's an ethyl branch on the sixth carbon. There's a two carbon branch right here. And on the eighth carbon, there's another methyl branch. So naming the branches alphabetically We'll put ethyl before we put the dimethyls, two methyls. You base your alphabetizing on the methyl versus ethyl. You don't use the di in diethyl to uh, alphabetize. So we're going to put the ethyls first. So this is 6-ethyl. Then we'll note that on carbon 3 and 8, there are two, sorry, on carbon 5 and 8, there are two methyl branches. So that'll be... 5 comma 8 dash dimethyl and then our alcohol group is on carbon number 3 the hydroxyl group so dash 3 dash decanol decanol and alternatively you might have said dimethyl decan 3 all that would be the UPAC way of doing that. The next molecule, locate the functional group. That's again this carbonyl group. Carbon with a double bonded to oxygen is carbonyl. If it's at the end of a chain, then, then it's called an aldehyde. If it's somewhere in the middle of a chain like this, then it's referred to again as a ketone. So when an carbonyl group is not at the end of a chain, you have a ketone. The ending of the name will be own, and we'll note the parent chain has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 carbons. The ketone group, the carbonyl, is closer to the left side than it is to the right side, so we'll count from there. 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon has the ketone group, the uh, carbonyl, and then 5, 6, the 6th carbon has this um, ethyl branch. So now we're ready to, to name this. So we're going to name it 6-ethyl, 4, and again there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 carbon, so 4 octanone. Okay, so 6-ethyl, 4-octanone. I'm going to pause the video there and split it, and we'll create a second video looking at a few more examples.